Hey guys, Pastor Don here. And I'm Rachel. It's my daughter. We love to talk to each other. <laughs> Lots of banter. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I yell at her, but I'm allowed to do that since I'm her dad. But I promise you I won't do that this time. Oh, let's see how that goes. Yeah, so we want to we want to welcome you to uh, we're gonna be this is Empowerment Month. This is the month of May, Empowerment Month. Rachel, when you think of empowerment, what do you think about? I think of just being filled with the Holy Spirit, having that authority and power, and just kind of walking like I know that I have nothing to fear. I'm strong because the Lord is with me. The Spirit is upon me. That's right. And and so, but but honestly, let, let's talk about. Let's we're going to jump right in. When when you talk to people, even when you think about the Holy Spirit, the Bible says that He is the third person in the Trinity, and I know that, and we'll show some of that. But how do you feel like? How do you relate to that? I mean. Does it, you struggle with that or? Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm sure others feel this way too. I think within the Trinity, probably the Holy Spirit is the most difficult one to relate to. I think the easiest one is Jesus, right? Because we can kind of put a picture to who Jesus was. He was, he was you know, he, he lived in a body. So we can relate to that. Uh, we know that Jesus experienced what we experience on this earth. And so it's easier to relate to him. And even, you know, God the Father, we might have a concept of, who a father would be, and, and so we can relate to that, but with the Holy Spirit, and, and even for those of you maybe who are in my generation, you know, yeah. growing up, you, he was called the Holy Ghost, you know, the, the Holy Ghost <laughs> will come, and you're like, a ghost? Oh my goodness, like, <laughs> I don't know if I want that here, you know, but even if you say the Holy Spirit, we think of something intangible or right. maybe ethereal, and it's, it's really difficult to relate to him because we don't really know what that means. Yeah, and even, even, even when you mention the Father, Sometimes people on earth has a, like a, a bad father figure. So they struggle to even understand who the father is. So the Holy Spirit, though, when we look at the Holy Spirit, we know that he is a person. And so when we look at the Bible, we see it. Like, so he's not, he's not the force, you know. He's not some, like, mystical thing. As a matter of fact, you mentioned when we were talking earlier, you mentioned about 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2. Why don't you that's share right, that? That's, that's really right. good. If you look in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul's talking about the wisdom of God, the mystery of God that was hidden, and that has been revealed to us by the Spirit. In verse 10, it says, The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. And we have received the Spirit of God, so we know, we can know the mind of God through the Holy Spirit. And, and if you think about it that way, the Spirit is actually even closer to us. It should be that we can relate to him even more because he is within us and, and he can know our thoughts and we can know his thoughts because he is the Spirit. Right. And when, and when I think of my own body, when we think of our own body, like, honestly, I don't think of me. I know that, like, sometimes when I see my image, yeah, but I know that inside, I'm like, I'm Donald. I mean, I have a spirit inside me. And so that's kind of how the Holy Spirit is, that that's the spirit of God. And so when it's not some force, it's not some mystical, it's not even an it, it's a him. And in the Bible, when we look in the Bible, the Holy Spirit is found throughout the whole Bible. It's not like all of a sudden he comes on the scene. He's actually, even in the, the first chapter, uh, second verse of Genesis, it says, in the beginning, the world was formless and void, and the Spirit of God hovered over the earth. So when we look at the Bible, we see that he's, he's right at the beginning. We see him all the way throughout. You see, they, they actually have a title for him a lot of times, the Spirit of God, or the Spirit of the Lord. Or even in one reference in Matthew, it says he's like the finger of God, which is really interesting because uh, I heard somebody talking. I thought it was a great uh, analogy. They said the father is like the architect. He's the one who designs everything. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Jesus is kind of the, the one who's come in and, and he's like the builder, you know. But then the Holy Spirit is like the executioner. He's the one who executes things. So he's like the finger of God. So he, he's part of the Trinity. He, he, has, we have, he has a mind. The Bible says he has a mind. Uh, in Romans chapter 12, it says he, he has a mind. In, in 1 Corinthians 12, it says that he has a will. It says that he uh, arranges things as he sees fit. So he has a will. We, he even has emotions. Mm -hmm. We see that he can be grieved or saddened. Mm -hmm. you know. So, so we, he has 
aspects of a person. So when we look at the Holy Spirit, we know he's not an it, he's not a force, he's not some kind of mystical thing. He's someone that we can have a relationship with. And I, I want to read, because one of the really good verses, and we'll read some more later, if you really want to look at a, uh, some of the description of the Holy Spirit, in John chapter 14 through chapter 16, Jesus, actually that passage is probably some of the longest, you know, straight teachings of Jesus there is in the, in the Gospels. And he talks a lot about the Holy Spirit, especially in chapter 16. And so I want to read a piece of that uh, because in, in chapter 14 and then 15, Jesus starts talking about, listen, I'm leaving here. I'm out of here. You know, he says in 14, I go to prepare a place for you. And where I go, you shall be also. And I'll come back. And they're like bummed out. They're like, what? Going away? So then, sorry, I'm talking a lot. Is that okay, Rachel? Right. Keep going. She's used to me talking a lot, that's for sure. <laughs> But in, in, so then in chapter 16, he says this. He says, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the, and he uses the word advocate. In some places in, in chapter 16 and chapter 14, he uses the word comforter. He says, uh, then the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him, not it, I will send him to you. And when he comes, the advocate, you know, when he comes, he'll do some things. So the word advocate there means someone who will come alongside. And it actually also says someone of the same essence, the mm -hmm. same DNA mm -hmm. of who I am, the same DNA will come. So we know that we, when we have the Holy Spirit, we have Jesus. We have, mm -hmm. we have God. And that's what the Holy Spirit is, God. You know, and, I'm, and you were mentioning what, what happened with Jesus with the Holy Spirit coming on him out of Isaiah 60. Right, in Isaiah 61, remember when Jesus... Oh, 61, sorry, yeah. yeah when Jesus uh, reads uh, in the temple um, from, from the book of Isaiah, he says, the spirit of the sovereign God is upon me and he has anointed me. And if you look in the Hebrew, even you mentioned Genesis chapter 1, when, when it talks about the spirit of God, the word in Hebrew is ruach. And ruach in Hebrew is not just spirit, but it actually is breath. Amen. It's breath. You're literally like breath, the mm. breath of God. And so when he is life itself. The, the very essence of God Woo! is his breath, his spirit. Yes. And we, we, li we depend on that. We, we can't live without it. We can't, I mean, we, we would not be animate without the breath of God upon us, without the spirit of God. And so when Jesus talks about the advocate coming, the Holy Spirit, the comforter coming, it, it really is that we can live life fully because we have his breath, his spirit within us. Yeah, and, and that's, boy, now you got me going. <laughs> so because in, in Genesis chapter 2, when, he, when God created man, it says that he breathed. Mm -hmm. And that's the very same Thing. He breathed life. And so we know that the Spirit of God brings life. Woo! That gets me so excited. Doesn't that empower you? <laughs>